Hey everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in live today for the Skill Building Monday Drawing Group. It is Monday, April 15th, and it is noon. And if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments or in the chat, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. And welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams, real world events, to share and inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. We beam out nearly every day and with your help have evolved into, an, into a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo and art shows that have all been receiving rave reviews. You can find Reinventing the Tattoo at www.reinventingthetattoo.com. You do not have to subscribe right away. Uh, we have three different options that you can use to try it out. Uh, the first option is a sample webinar from the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon, um, or you can get some free advice from Guy Aitchison about your unique goals. And I apologize for any kind of background noise. I do have a cat. Um, sorry about that. Um, or you can get some free advice from Guy Aitchison about your unique goals, or you can take a comprehensive tattoo history course from Jay Brown. For fellow tattoo history nerds such as myself, that tattoo history course is absolutely phenomenal. Highly recommend it. Um, you, at reinventingthetattoo.com, you can also find a full event schedule with full weekly and special event live stream details. Uh, for example, if you wanted to join today's show, you could go to the event calendar, find today's event, click on that, and a link will be posted right inside that event. And that will allow you to go through and join us live today. At reinventingthetattoo.com, you can also find access to our Reinventing 24-7 channel, which is a lot like our Roku channel. It's got 13 different episodes going, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. As well, you can also find a whole host of professional development courses from over 20 world-class tattoo artists. So if you wanted to learn how to tattoo a skull like Bob Tyrell, you can find that there. Maybe you want to learn how to tattoo a half sleeve like Andre Malcolm. Well, guess what? There's a couple of videos there as well. So you can find anything and everything you could possibly be looking for all available at reinventingthetattoo.com. You can also find Reinventing the Tattoo at both of the app stores, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, as well as our Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel our Reinventing the Tattoo Roku channel, which I mentioned earlier, has 12 to 15 different episodes going at any given time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as well as all of the major podcast directories such as Apple and Spotify. Or you can do what most people do and just open your web browser and do a quick search for Reinventing the Tattoo and you will find it all, except for the book, which is still currently out of print. If you can come across a copy of it for sale, please let me know. Uh, I've been itching to pick up another copy of it for quite a few years. And as usual, they're always sold out everywhere. So let me know. Once again, if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments and in the chats. And please tag a friend who loves tattoos. Uh, we have a number of weekly staple shows we always encourage people to tune into. Starting off on Mondays at 9 a.m. with Drawing Four Tattooers with James Wisdom where we get to go through and discuss basic drawing techniques and strategies. Uh, helps us get back to our core fundamentals and core roots of being a fine artist in the tattoo world. Following Drawing Four Tattooers at 9 a.m. on Mondays with James Wisdom. Following that, at noon, we have the Skill Building Monday Drawing Group with me, Jason Leeser, which you are currently watching. And capping off Monday nights at 9 p.m., we have a subscriber's exclusive drawing group with Sandy McAndrew from the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. During this subscriber's exclusive drawing group, we do go through every week and we pick a different focus for that week, um, something to help us improve our artwork. But you do need a subscription to either the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon or the Reinventing the Tattoo Evolution course in order to access the Monday evening drawing groups. Highly recommend it from personal experience. The Monday evening drawing groups alone are worth every cent. Um, it is absolutely incredible how much you can improve 
when you make the commitment to tune in for an hour or two Monday nights every week and just see where it goes from there. Trust me when I say it's worth it. Following that, on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., we have the Tattoo Weekly Show with Gabe Ripley, Lauren Gregory, and Fawn Baker. Um, and that during that show, we get to go through and discuss some of the new upcoming legislation or any other relevant news that might impact the tattoo industry as a whole. Um, definitely recommend you tune into that just so that you can stay on top of all of the new information coming out. On Wednesdays at noon, we have the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley, where we get to go through and do a deeper dive into the business aspect behind tattooing, whether it's applying for a travel visa to work in another country, or maybe it's talking about marketing and advertising strategies and techniques. Maybe it's how to streamline your client booking process. All of that and a lot more is available, and that is the Tattoo Now show Wednesday at noon. Follow that Thursdays at 6 p.m. We have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast with Vaughn Baker, where we get to go through some of our entertaining stories about collecting our tattoos and how that's had impact on our careers. We also have a number of special live events coming up, uh, events that you do not want to miss. Starting off 17th through 19th in Columbus, Ohio, we have the Hell City Tattoo Convention. Would not believe the lineup of artists working at Hell City this year. Special artists include Paul Booth, the Lord of Darkness himself, uh, Derb Morton, Joe Capobianco. I've been looking at his work for a long, long time. Jimmy Litwalk, Nico Perez, Ty, James Vaughn, Jesse Levitt, Ron Earhart, Marshall Bennett. His black and gray work is. Jake Meeks will be there, James, or sorry, um, and me, Jason Leeser, I'll be working right next to my very good friend, Seth Mushrush, um, and that is the City uh, Columbus, Ohio Tattoo Convention. Following that, June 23rd through 25th, also in Columbus, Ohio, we have the first annual Tattoopreneur Conference. Um, where Reinventing the Tattoo will be live at Red Tree Gallery. That is going to be co-hosted by Dark Age Tattoo Studios, um, owned by Rember. And that is going to be three days of business, art, and tattoo seminars. And we have plenty of people presenting, as well as myself. We have Bob Tyrell. He's going to be doing a seminar there. Haley Adams will be flying out from San Francisco. Uh, she'll also be doing a seminar. We've got seminars also by Jake Meeks, James Wisdom, and Rember. Um, so it's going to be absolutely loaded, three days worth of seminars, focusing on business, focusing on uh, art and tattoos. You can't miss it. It's going to be amazing. We'd like to go through and take a quick second to thank uh, some of our sponsors and some of the people that make these shows happen. Starting off with worldtattooevents.com the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. They're constantly keeping everything updated. As we know, living in this post-pandemic era, tattoo events and conventions are still getting rescheduled like crazy. So if you are looking for the most up-to-date tattoo event and convention information coming to a city or town near you, or maybe it's one you plan on visiting, that's how I book all my, all my vacations, uh, take a look at worldtattooevents.com. Would also like to thank tattoonow.com, technology for tattooers, the leading edge in professional development, management, and digital tools for tattooers of all levels. They are 100% competitive with any type of CRM, mailing list, or scheduling software out there. So if you are looking for the digital tools to help you get more clients through the door to, that want to get the kind of work that you really want to do, if you're looking for the digital tools that are going to help you streamline your booking process, take a look at TattooNow.com. would also like to say a very personal and professional thank you and shout out to Guy Aitchison at GuyAitchison.com. He is the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo. Go to GuyAitchison.com where you can pick up a copy of his Biomech Encyclopedia, some of his tutorial DVDs. You may still have one or two custom coil machines for sale. 
as well as countless fine art prints and the occasional oil painting, all for sale at GuyHison.com. Would also like to go through and say a very special thank you and shout out to Amy Nichols over at the Apprenticeship Diaries. The, well, maybe not the number one resource, but definitely my favorite resource for tattoo apprenticeship information. Um, if you are looking to understand what a tattoo apprenticeship is like and you want to get some advice on becoming a tattoo artist, take a look at the Apprenticeship Diaries with Amy Nichols. Uh, you can find all kinds of great information on being a tattoo apprentice or an apprentice hopeful, um, all available at the Apprenticeship Diaries podcast. Uh, where was I? Uh, yes. As always, we ask that if you like today's show, please go through, post a positive review on the channel, help us get the word out. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. That way you don't miss any future episodes coming up on this channel. If you would like to host a Reinventing the Tattoo event, become a sponsor of our community, or if you are looking for a fine art or a tattoo critique, you can always email management at reinventingthetattoo.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Today on, well, on today's show, we actually have a special guest artist. Uh, Mickey Schlick has joined us, um, and I'm going to go through and let him in in just a second. Here we are. What's going on, Mickey? How's it going, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Long time no see. Haven't seen you since Paradise Gathering. Uh, that was back in October. Um, so quick. But you're also pretty active on uh, on a lot of the other podcasts and streams as well. I've been meaning to get on this one. I do um, do. James, I've done James's a couple times. I want to. I want to get on more. I've now finally got my shit a little bit better together. Uh, not quite as far as I would like, but enough to talk about and give some people some content and stuff to check out. Awesome, awesome. So why don't we start off? Let us know where you're from. Where do you work? Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so I work in Missoula, Montana. I own a shop called Montana Tattoo Company. Um, I'm also starting a kind of online centered educational, more of uh, like not really tattoo based. It's more of like drawing and like program based, how to deal with different programs. Um, as I try to learn all that stuff myself, it helps me to talk about it. That's, I guess, what I've been up to. Um, and, yeah, I've been doing this about 22 years. First tattoo was probably in 2001. or It had to be 2002. And, um, yeah, I got probably about the word off. No apprenticeship. <laughs> there was, uh, uh, it was, you know, definitely probably not what most people uh would want to get into or or a path that most people would say is, is the way to go but it's been it's working well that's awesome that's all if you had to pick uh like one generation to getting into the tattoo industry what what would you say it would have been if one generation yeah. I had a cousin that had a couple of cool tattoos. I mean, looking back, they weren't really cool. But at the time, I thought they were cool. <laughs> and of course, like, you know, in my teenage years, I wanted the, I'm going to do all the gods or one's good and one's evil. Like, I had all the ideas. And um, I didn't ever even really think about it. I didn't know I could draw. I didn't know that that was a thing until I was in my 20s. I wasn't allowed to do any of that as a kid. My dad came home one time. And the neighborhood kids at our apartment. and he came up and I, he came up to the apartment to find out that like I had taken a Sharpie to his car to paint it. And uh, he wasn't stoked. I was never able to like, I couldn't even put any stickers on anything or draw on my arm or anything like that. That was like all super taboo. And then um, it was, I didn't have a bad childhood. It, I just, I guess there was a lot of attention seeking at one point. And by the time I was 19, I got busted and went to jail for five years. And 
it kind of fell in my lap. So the story I tell is that this thing found me broke naked and alone. It's given me everything that I have. Um, and I want to give back. That's powerful, man. It's really powerful. Thank you. You know, uh, it's an inspiration too, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have gone down some, some dark paths in life and, you know, they always tend to find their way out and it's, well, know, that's the it's thing, finding right? that one thing you have and you have the choice every day to make new choices every day. Yep. And if you're going to do that, then great. That's the test. You pass the test, you know, don't right. do the same stuff. But that's, I think, kind of one of the things that I, I, as I've been thinking about talking to people about this stuff, oh, just opening with, hi, I'm Mickey Schlick, and I guarantee I'm the dumbest person in the room. <laughs> uh, and this is how you work your way out of it, you know? Well, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think I agree with that, considering all of the uh, the stuff that you've been doing in the past. You know, I mean, even since I've gotten to know you, you've been pushing the bounds of you know, technology and, you know, everything like that as well. Um, you know, I've seen you working on some really cool stuff uh, that definitely requires a greater level of intelligence than uh, I think a lot of people but if it, can if comprehend. I, but if you look at the rap sheet of shitty decisions, it, it will throw a definite wrench into that competition. Uh, but that's okay. You know, we've all been there. We've all done stuff that yeah. we're not stoked about. And then you tell somebody about it and they're like, man, look at this shit that I did that was way worse. And so <laughs> if I can be that person, that's like, hey, man, you can fuck up everything. And all you have to do is like apply yourself and just like stay motivated. The one thing that I've always kind of looked at, though, is like I've never really looked at it. I've always looked at it as a lifestyle. So I'm just like on all the time. Um, yeah. And that's been to my benefit. You know, it takes a 20 hour tattoo week, work week and turns it into 70, 80 hours of mostly free time. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So uh, getting into some of the nitty gritty. Um, so I, I've got some standard questions. I always yeah. like to ask people just out of pure curiosity. Um so what would you consider your primary medium to be as an artist? Um, you know, this is obviously a tattoo centric show, so let's look outside of tattooing. Um, but as a pure artist, what, what would you say your primary medium is? I know you I would, work a lot with digital. I would, fight, I would fight you all day to not have to say what my primary medium is. Um, I do digital. I think right now my main thing is digital and, and I, and I've had to accept that, um, it's not, you know, if I wanted to be an oil painter, I could be an oil painter. If I wanted to be a digital artist, I could be a digital artist. I just want to create shit and I don't really care. You know, I'll spray foam on a board and cut it up to look like rocks and then texture it with plaster. And I'm just as happy doing that as I am doing, um, you know, there's a bunch of half of these paintings behind me are airbrushed. The other half are all digital, sometimes in Photoshop, sometimes in Procreate. Lately, I've been getting into 3D a lot. Um, I have some motorcycle tanks that I painted back here, a car too. Um, and I really love just like, I think my, the thing I've always said, is anything from skin to steel. Um, and I really like being flexible and just understanding the tools and the mediums that are available to us so that you can apply it to whatever you want. Um, and I guess that's, that's I enjoy learning and, and trying new things. And unfortunately, once I've learned them and I do something and I'm like, oh, that's great. I kind of don't do it that much anymore, um, which hurts the marketing ability. But I'll figure that puzzle out. Too. Right on. Right on. Um, so have you noticed any kind of a correlation between the the art that you create regardless of which medium you're working in and the tattoos that you do. Um, I know sometimes artists will draw a correlation between, Oh, you know, I work primarily with oils, you know, outside of tattooing. So, you know, there's a little bit of a correlation there. Or I work with, you know, watercolors and liquid acrylics or, 
you know, I build a lot of clay sculptures and, you know, so I'm constantly thinking about things in that aspect. Um, so if you noticed any kind of a correlation between the art that you create and the tattoos that you create? Um, you know, I think like early on, I got into the realism kind of stuff and I've leaned on that a lot and in, in allowing people to ask and um, where I can learn how to draw. And then in the last few years, I've really gone back to like the basics of drawing and, and how to, um, you know, put shapes together and stuff like that. I see correlations everywhere, but I feel good at like problems and cutting it in half, right? So <clears throat> I can see correl all of those things connect to tattooing, right? From color palettes to line work to whether something's bold. The, the issue I find that more people have a problem with is trying everything in tattooing, right? Like not everything is going to correlate. You can't, you can get away without lines, but getting away without black is not advisable. Yeah. Um, and there's just certain, you know, aspects that you have to consider, you know, it's, it's, it's also not a, a opaque ink and it's also not an ink. It's a paint. <laughs> um, so the more you can kind of like, I think they all correlate in different ways. Um, lately, I've been liking my favorite thing right now, and um, or digital or clay, and I think it really solves so many problems that you don't. Net, you know, when you're learning how to draw, you're trying to approach all of these topics, but then once you start, you know, understanding the, these forms in 3D perspective and lighting problems go right out the window because you just it's there the answers are there you know like if you have the forms right so it looks good and you can turn it around it's hard hard to compete yeah yeah I, i've done a little bit of 3d modeling before um and that it's not easy um it definitely takes a different type of mindset to really go through and you know work to create something that's three-dimensional in a virtual environment um so bravo to you for that man because that's on another like i can draw a pretty picture but like creating a three-dimensional form it it's a bit more than my mind can process because i i usually look at whatever i'm working on whether i'm sketching on an ipad or paper or whatever you know, it's to me, it's a window into another world, but you're only seeing one view of it. Right. Right. When you're working with 3D, whether it's virtual or physical, you're not only looking at it from one way, you're looking at every angle all the way around the object, you know, and Correct. thus you have to start thinking about, okay. Well, if this looks like this on this side, what's this going to look like on this side? You know, and then how is this all going to fit together? How, is this the right proportion over here that it is over here? Is this at the same angle or proportion that it needs to be than down here? So it takes a different type of mindset to really kind of uh, contemplate how to work with three-dimensional structures in that fashion. So I, I applaud you for that, man. That It's not easy. Well, I mean, the thing that I would say about that is that I, I think it's easier than drawing. And I think that, like, because we're already working in, you know, it's really easy to be like, hey, what are these drawing principles and how does this stuff work? And and you're absolutely right. You have to think about it from a ton of different angles. But here's my sales pitch. Um, the issue is that if you make that, can change, change the angle, then every shot that you take of it, every image that you produce of it is a, could be a different tattoo. The line works already worked out the lines, the shading, the lighting, everything is already you can a realistic photo of it. You can even then take it into procreate and just draw a line drawing over it if you want, but all the homework is done. So if you do a lot of five eyed tigers and you make a five eyed tiger, and then you just change the light and the angle so that thing every time it's really yours it's your style it's it's your image but now you can make one piece of flash that's going to give you 20 tattoos over the years and they're all going to be 
uh, custom and unique than one. So learning curve does kind of like offset everybody's uh, want, desire to get into it, especially because it doesn't apply directly to tattooing. You still have to translate a bit. But in terms of like making your own reference that you can copy, like mm -hmm. and use many times over, um, it's it definitely a great tool. I, I avoided it for years. I spent a year um, neck deep in it. And uh, it's definitely worth putting a couple of hours into good to know good to know might have to uh might have to pull back out some of my 3d software and start working with that do you have nomad um, uh i do not okay but you got ipad right yeah so i'm getting ready to drop a. it's actually going to be a series of videos i have the files uh already made but i don't have the videos made um, that I'm calling, and I, you would love this, or maybe you wouldn't love this, I don't know, the Danger Noodle Doodle tool, or tool that maybe. And it's basically, I've gone through and sculpted a bunch of shapes. There's a couple of primary shapes for like a dragon head and a snake head, dragon body, snake body, octopus tentacle, and then uh, um, future updates, when somebody gets one there, it's updated forever. Um, there's going to be the matte caps and textures also to like kind of make a dummy in 3d that you could then take into procreate and get everything right into perspective for the people that like i had the hardest time turning certain shapes especially um long flat ones or long round ones uh in in space for a long time and there's a million ways around it but um you know i made i made this one file and the beauty that you don't have to repeat people when you get it you get all the all the files all the videos of how i made it and all the files of what i've made in the process pretty man i'm really going to take a look at that okay. um you use modern a lot of modern technology ipads uh computers um lots of different types of software um, how would you say that that impacted your process when creating art and maybe designing tattoos? Would you say it's had like a significant impact? Would you say it's, you know, maybe another tool in the toolbox? Um, um, you know, it's a little bit of both, right? It's definitely another tool in the toolbox. I think that like, especially if you're a traditional artist, like you, you shouldn't not know it. Um, term me, it's definitely like set my production capabilities on fire right because i can make one image you know now i'm kind of looking at it like the, i have times when i'm making some kind of art that maybe i'm painting it or drawing it or whatever and something really creating an image my reference image i'm trying to make um you know something that i can use going forward and it's really just giving me the ability to make you know way way more in the same amount of time so i spent been a lot of years drawing right on people and i'm going to draw it on you and we're going to go to town it doesn't really matter what it is it can be an airplane it could be a chrysanthemum it can be whatever style um and i did pretty well i did I was, it was pretty successful for a bunch of years and then i got into th thinking well, what if i you know draw it and then take it off and and redraw it and that went pretty good for a bit and now i'm like okay well i can still i can still pretty much put a tattoo together in place again. Um, what if I get us 90% of the way there in sculpture and 3D where all the way up until the last minute of the tattoo, I can change the camera angle, the lighting, the colors. I can change every little bit of it. And if we put it on and a piece needs to be changed, I just draw it how it should be changed. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so it's really given me the ability to dial in on making one little part perfect at a time and then repeat it right so like in the instance of a snake you can make instead of making doing the math to do the um the grid and then splitting the grid in half to make the scales you can make a scale and then repeat it as many times as you need to to make um to make the object you want right and everything is like that so instead of needing to get a whole chapel correct you might need to get a couple of arches and a couple of pillars correct and then you put them together and 
you have an awesome image and you made everything and you spent the time to make it perfect, but you only had to do each thing one time. And so just all, all around digital, it, it helps, um, helps us to be a more, or helps me to be creative, more creative, faster, whether or not okay. you have paintings or art, um, is I guess up to the viewer and I don't really, I'm, I'm just having fun doing it. Right on, right on. Um, so knowing that you work with a lot of technology, what, would, what in your opinion, do you really see being like the next big technology advancement in this industry? In tattooing? Yeah. Mm. I mean, the iPad was revolutionary, right, for us. Absolutely. Because with the iPad, we had this virtual tablet that we could sketch and draw on. We no longer really needed tracing paper. You know, you can cram a thousand different layers into different documents. Uh, maybe not a thousand, but depending on the size of storage of your iPad, you might be able to get, you know, a couple hundred. Um, but it was this huge revolutionary thing, right? So long, you know, tattoo flash sheets no longer really needed for that. Now we've got these uh, Procreate stamp brushes that people can go through and create flash. Um, it's actually part of the seminar that I'm going to be doing at Paradise this year is creating your own flash stamps. Um, you know, then people can go through, sell, trade, all types of stuff uh, to go through and kind of make a little bit of secondary revenue. But that's, you know, outside the point, you know. So it's like, what, in your opinion, do you think is going to be the next step? Well, the next thing, unfortunately, is the AI, which, you know, we can argue it all day. I always play devil's advocate so the people that are like no ai i'm like here's why ai is really great for us and then i they have there's a bunch of artists that you know i've been looking up to for years and i can clearly tell like all of this current shit is ai and you're like you're a person that can tattoo and you can probably draw and you go to all this shit straight but you know the reality of the situation is if you can make 500 iterations in an hour um and you can work it all out from thumbnails that way then what are you going to do to stop it other than argue it you know um, so what I'm trying to do is kind of like blend all that stuff. You can take a specific, um, you know, it's like use the, use the AI. It, it's, it's, I guess it's going to be stringing it all together. Right. So for me personally, my, my current th way that I'm looking at it is I'll use AI if I don't know what I'm exactly needing or going for with and, and sometimes and a lot for realism right so if you need a wolf or a bear or a moose that there's a million of them on google and you're going to get on there and do a realism tattoo anyway um that's a good way to come up with a couple hundred of them real real damn fast um what i like to do from there is go into 3d and and make a base image that i can use many times over from there you can apply uh different filters to it that will make it that you could from then, from those filtered JPEG images, from those filtered still images, you can then make procreate brushes. And then, so if you have one eagle head and you went and spent all the time making this thing super dope, you can have that as flash from 20 different angles because now you're starting to like marry these programs together, right? Marry these processes together. And then, um, you know, you have a greater understanding and everybody's gonna have more independent reach. I think like everybody's going to have the ability to create more. And, um, you know, I guess, the, I guess the big conversation right now is how are we going to be scanning people in? Because yeah. that's, um, super cool. looks really good, especially if you want to display tattoos or if you want to work, if you want to work on a model at, around their existing tattoos. Um, me personally, I'm trying to work on a method where it's a more, uh, where it's, um, Different approach, you get the person's face and body type, but not their existing tattoos. Difference being that you can see the person moving and you can see the tattoo moving on the person if you get all the, um, if you get everything right. And it's not a super long process and it's, they're not super expensive programs when it comes to like what you're going to sell the client on. Um, it's a day of work to, to buy some of this stuff or, or less. Um, so Hopefully it's going to be a more, um, more understanding is not going anywhere and everybody needs to embrace it. And all the old guys that are, 
super adverse to it are the new Taddy babies. And, yeah. you know, like, I'm not gonna, well, you're not just like tattooing this style of shit because you're probably scared at, about it and you're probably not that great at it. And if you took the time out of your day to be like, how does this work? And I now understand these tools, then you got it. But if you're if you're constantly like, I'm drawing my next thing for tomorrow today and I'm working based on what I'm was doing yesterday, as opposed to like aiming for a goal that where you want to get to, you know, um, you just stay in that hole while everybody else figures it out. Um, so I'm hoping to help people with that problem. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I, so I, I've got my own thoughts and feelings on AI. I mean, I know some artists out there will, uh, run things through a, an AI program and then it's like, cool, what do you think of this or this or this? And, you know, it's like, cool, well, that's what you get. Um, I like to use AI and I've started to embrace it more and more recently, you know, trying out different programs, different platforms, different ways to generate those images. Um, but I'm using it more for inspiration. You know, say I'm going to end up tattooing a Medusa on someone, right? Well, if I use AI, sometimes I can come up with different concepts or, uh, well, I wouldn't come up with it. AI would come up with different concepts, perspectives, or, you know, maybe scenes or additional elements to use in that tattoo that could jog my own inspiration. Um, and, you know, and, things I would have never thought of. And there's also, I know, uh, opportunities that, you know, you can in and say, hey, game I love whoever. Right. Um, I don't feel I'm developed enough to do that. But I, and I'm that's the thing. And, uh, it, it's going to come like 200 in an hour, whatever. Right. That is, you know, stupid not to use. And I feel that, you know, Da Vinci, a couple of methods, or, or as far as the grid here. With a 3D um, view of the world on a 2D surface, and everything's in its feeding, right? Making our, our own brushes, mixing up our own paint, lemon tattooing. That you know, people aren't doing certain things, but in reality, like that's kind of like how industry is and the world works, right? And I don't think that the tools are cheating, I think that like not understanding them, if it's something you need, if it's not something you need, and you're happy, just like the 13 colors around all time um and a method they feel like to work i, I wish I, um, I look at something that looks interesting right so you know that's as i talk who are Your stuff is have all this and all these different things that you do and all the you so um i'm trying to bring together because i know there's other people that feel like adhd artist brain and are struggling to like stay focused and that that's part of it you know to, to market yourself but um if you're at one place in your career and you're trying to step into the next place in your career i'm happy to share all of my experience and make some call share with everybody else also right on man right on and, and coming from the perspective of other people in the industry man i thank you for that uh you know finding that next step can be really scary sometimes and you know trying to go through and saying okay well i've been doing the same thing in the same way with the same tools for so long you know I, personally, I get bored. I know a lot of other artists get bored as well because you start to plateau after a while and then you start to ask yourself, well, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? But having someone like you that's so forward thinking. Well, I'm not. I'm, not I, I, well, I'm plateauing I also. Well. I, I'm plateauing also. And I'm like, okay, if I can't make it through these other people that I look up to because they're because we're on the same timeline and I'm progressing as they're progressing or take some kind of long cut or secret journey through the center of the earth or something to like come out on top of this and um 
or or at least come out competitive you know because there's just so many people um and, and yeah it's you know people have to be yeah yeah i agree so next question i have is have you noticed any kind of a drawback to working with some of this more advanced technology um in relation to creating your tattoos i know myself i i go down a rabbit hole man and it's like i lose an entire day just diving into like some of this ai stuff just playing around with it trying to figure out how it works when you know that could be a day that i spend working on something else you know maybe drawings coming up or maybe it's you know a painting that i started that i never finished you know so i mean that's just the way my mind works but have you noticed anything um any kind of drawbacks to working in this kind of method so far for me the biggest drawback is like you can't tattoo all of it right you can't so much more detailed in it than you would ever get to in a in a in a drawing or a tattoo and I recently did something uh, just this past week. It was a griffin. And I spent three or four days sculpting it and then a day and a half tattooing it. Or it. But, you know, it ends up tiny on the forearm. And I can make this thing so I can do a 4K shot of its face. So a lot of times I'm not getting to where would be a great finished place in the sculpture before I just because. I know that the information I put in is not going to translate and you're completely right. It's, it's a, um, it's a giant investment in time and energy for, you know, if I don't need that for tomorrow's tattoo, um, is like, like so what if I, now that I've been made and posed and set up, what happens if I go back and spend another two days on it that I'm not getting paid for or another one day on it that I'm not getting paid for. And I really dial it in. Right. And then I can make five different, uh, different rendering and lighting of it. The benefit for me or, or my attempt is like, okay, now if I can turn this into subject matter for people that want fantasy art or surreal type back pieces, like huge pieces, and you want one of a kind, and I can make these creatures one or two a couple of times, and or, and just really dial them in. Um, it really, it it's it it's your post production. It's t your ongoing productions of the same thing, just become so much faster, right? Because then to do the second one, you just turn change the color if you need to take a different photo. It it's like two different photos of the same animal that you would never, you know, you would never bat an eye at if you had it in Google or in 3D. But now you have absolute complete control over the wing style, shape, spread, how it goes, you know, which way it's looking, if the mouth, if the mouth is open, is there a rider on it? How does the tail look? Um, you have, you know, maybe it's just because I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, no, but, I, think you, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, you have unlimited possibilities when you're working with 3D. Um, because you can change the angle slightly and then you can change the light source and it's almost like you come up with a completely different concept um, you know so it's it's really impressive it really is I, th I think also like when I think about it um, one of my earliest memories of art is my dad just being like yeah if it's not realistic then it's not art then they're just bullshitting you know and um, so I really always kind of leaned into portraits and realism and especially if you can do a face you know and i read early on if you if you um run into the if any problem that you're going to run into in realistic drawing you're going to run into between the ears um just one second i'm taking a package um and so i've always been so that's what i've kind of always uh leaned into thanks man slick um and now that's kind of the thing too right is i'm still trying to create something but i've always looked at it at you know the epitome of art or the or the high ground is is you know can i make something that's i'm imagining and make it look realistic right louis royo boris viejo anybody that's like you know can i make a thing out of my mind and make it look realistic and what that really means is like is my brain gonna believe that this could exist maybe even in a dream 
right? And then, you know, then it takes out some of the some of the work in you know, switching to 3D then takes out some of the work in getting things in perspective, getting proportions right, you know. But then you can also thumbnail a lot looser and you have, you know, come up with 20 thumbnails where your idea is getting hashed out and you, that's where you're spending your drawing time. And then you have this other thing where you can put that image together in an hour and a half. And then you go to open pram, spend another hour and a half there getting everything just perfect. And, and you know, I mean, imagine just with dragons, right? <clears throat> I did a sculpture of this dragon. I haven't sold any tattoos from it yet. Um, can I share a screen? Yeah, go yeah. for it by mm -hmm. all means. Let me share. I think it's this one. Okay. So we're going to go to. My way here. Mickey. So this guy. So I made this sculpture. Uh, in zebra or yeah, yeah i made it in zbrush lit it in marmoset tool bag and this nice. is one this is one sculpture that has a bunch of different textures applied to it right so it doesn't exist in real world these are all just computer generated images from a 3d sculpture that i made right so then i don't know what these trees are so then you come from there and you have it apply a texture like this one in the middle. Let me see if I can blow this up. Where it's just basically, right? Like you, you could run this sketch through a thermal effects machine. And then because you've set it apart like that, you can switch it. You can, you know, mess with the curves and change it to a black and white image. And then you can I think apply we're still it. waiting for the screen to catch up to you. Okay. Because right now I'm seeing the uh, the back pieces and the sleeves. Yeah, yeah, no, that's out. perfect. That's what I'm showing you. That's exactly. Oh, what okay, I'm you. okay. Cool. So those the, all those back pieces are from this one model, right? So the center Whoa. back piece that's just a line drawing came is basically the same as the model above it, right? It's just lines instead of this pro texture. That's wild, man. All of those are just different angles of the same sculpture with different colors applied and different negative space for flow right even the left one and the right one it's i think the exact same image probably um and this is just concepts so now off of one sculpture that i think took me two days um you know if i could sell all of these back pieces that's quite a bit of work it's quite the offset in the um, homework time you know yeah, that's that's pretty wild, man. That's pretty awesome. So just in terms of like, hey, if you want to say you want to do koi fish, right? And you go in and you make one and you say, cool, I think this one's perfect. Now I can do 50 different images from that one that could be tattoos. Now, the tattoo is going to look like a tattoo. The sculpture looks like a sculpture. You're just creating the image that you're then making the drawing for them so i know the hard part about explaining this to people is like you're shoehorning in a whole chunk of stuff that you have to prepare for and, and educate yourself on in front of the process that you're already using um but once you then get to the production phase of cool now i can make 30 different cool cool piece pieces when you you a and then when you want a different koi fish you just grab the one that you want and pull the pieces into the place that you want them so they look cool and now you have two if you that's, need all of them you just copy them that's pretty awesome it's, and it's it definitely it's takes a lot of the guesswork out of it it, it takes a ton of the guesswork it's not it's not just that it takes the guesswork out of it it allows you to focus on each and every square inch of the model statue whatever you want to call it um as opposed to like making sure you have everything right from one angle and getting the perspective and everything right, you're really spending your time going in and dialing down, hey, what do I want the texture on the teeth to be? What do I want 
on the eyes, you know, unfortunately, like I said, even if you're doing these as back pieces, a lot of that stuff is not going to, um, it's not going to translate when you get into the smaller details of the sculptures, right? You can make a four right, day right. of something really close up. But, um, if you go through the work to do that, then you can make any image you want. Um, and you can, you have complete control over everything. You just have to spend the time doing it. Hmm. That's fascinating, man. That's awesome. Thank you. So I can stop sharing this. Like that's the, so my mind's still trying to process that, but that's, that is in a really unique, really revolutionary way to go about doing things. And you you're right for the amount of time that you put into it, what you can get out of creating that one model is you know, just incredible. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. Hey, so check it out. I'm going to show you something else, but I'm logging in on a different account and I'm going to have to mute this microphone and use that microphone. Okay. But I'll, I'll be on both screens. Can you let me in over there? Yeah. All right, dope. Okay, I think this is going to be right so let me figure out how to share on this one. Oh damn share screen is not supported all right oh, well, I'll send you a video. let me turn this one off okay I'll, I'll end up sending you a video of it or sharing a video of it um but on the on uh, this whole dragon was made on zbrush um in procreate it's also extremely easy or not procreate but nomad it's like super easy and nomad just so, for clarification nomad is an iPad. application for an ipad yeah and you know i like using pcs um however it's like with procreate that's not the language everybody else is speaking so i'm gonna try to make my cool stuff into the programs i like and figure out how to translate those lessons down into the tools that everybody has um right right and so a lot of it translates you know some of it doesn't but generally, you know, all of these companies and all these programs are competing with each other. So chances are they have their own way of doing each of these applications or, or um, you know, if you have something that you have to do within one of the within one of the programs, they all have their own way of doing it. And they just have a copyrighted thing that they call it, you know, so whether it's depending on how it's you know you're merging tools or whether you're you know able to use layer styles or you have to do something different to get the same effect in procreate than you do in photoshop for instance um possible to do everything in both places so you know, as much as i love zbrush and it's really powerful nomad is a really incredible program and i wouldn't i would recommend people um definitely check it out and <clears throat> On lowbrownknowhow.com, one thing that I do is offer a con like I'm looking for content to post. And if anybody else, you know, if anybody has a question about these types of things and they want to ask it there, I will make a piece of content to share with everybody. How here's how you do this. So um, I'll send you a couple little videos from this danger noodle tool uh, if if you want, and I will give you. Um, access to it if you want to play with it and then at least you don't have to restart the wheel you can learn how to use the tools without worrying about hey am i making this look right right don't worry about worry about that later worry. don't worry about well, let me turn this back come on Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. Uh, so what was the last thing I said? Oh, yeah, um, I'll give you a link to it. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. So you can, you know, know if it works. What you can and yeah, go. Right on, right on. 
Um, so what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've faced, um, you know, when working with this technology and, um, you know, applying that to what you're doing every day? Um, you know, ha has it been like a huge learning curve? Is it, you know, more or less just it has the challenge been more time management, you know, because you're spending, you know, multiple days creating these um you know, as instead of tattooing, you're working on these in order to create more tattoos later. Has that been a challenge to prioritize? Um, you know, and have you, how have you overcome some of these challenges that you've been faced with? You know, the worst, the worst is, the worst challenge is just doubting yourself all the time, you know? Yeah, um, well, yeah. And for me, like, I grew up on the point where nobody saw what I was doing, stood, and I just had. It. And so I've come to accept that, like, once I give myself a challenge, then it's just all about my willingness to walk that path to make that stuff happen. Um, there's definitely a learning curve, and definitely for me, <clears throat> I'm very flexible. So I, all I really I can draw shapes in perspective that like that's a, a different animal that I've had to tackle in the past and that you know I feel confident about so I know that when a person gets here my safe place is like I don't know I'll draw on you probably a bigger challenge to get me to go out of my way to like tackle this but I do see you know a sliver of like oh I bet that when I get to the end of this tunnel it's just a garden on the other side and, um, you know, it makes it worth it. Right. And like, what are you spending your time doing for me? This is really where I get my joy in like making stuff and doing stuff. That's like where other people, especially other people that I look up to are like, yo, what is that? Or how did you do that? Or what a concept, you know, the idea will, um, management is an issue. If, <laughs> I've smoked quite a few relationships on, uh, hey, man, I'm going to be over here making stuff. Um, but I think if you're flexible enough to know, like, hey, this, it's like, the, it's like, the, um, right, if I use this in my thumbs, the idea generation, and I'm not just sitting around, like, twiddling my thumbs, trying to figure out, what for, um, then it can really inform what you're doing, and it can really, really help you grosser and make your life a lot easier you know the amount of times i spent trying to draw something for two days before i really tackled um the basic concepts <laughs> is i can't count the amount of days that i sat in a tattoo shop and did nothing that i can't count um you know and if you apply yourself you take a small amount of that time and you apply it then, you know, it can just really empower everything that you do so much more where it's not, it doesn't have to be an endless. I think one thing that's been, that I, that I benefit from is the fact that I try so much stuff and I have so much interest um, in trying new things. Whereas I know a ton of people think about art in, in a way where they're like, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to study anatomy and I'm going to study it forever and I'm going to perfect it. Right. And I, I think it's more about understanding some of these concepts than perfecting um, stuff. Super understanding of perspective. So I think we all have to figure out how to let go of the things that we're using to hold ourselves back and the excuses that we're using to hold ourselves back because, um, you know, you're the end all be all of you. It's on you if you're going to stay in a in a in a spot that you're starting to f lose love for or feel that is not as good for you anymore. Um, and <clears throat> I know a lot of people when they're like, I've chosen that this is what I'm going to do. And that's the one thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to work this way all the time. Then yeah, also this should be looking for your th thing you have found. Then how can you not try? Yeah, that's very good point. 
Very good point. So if you had to give one piece of advice to any new budding artist out there, what would it be? Spend the money and invest in yourself all the time. Because if you're out here working, you know, <clears throat> I feel extremely privileged and lucky in my own situation because I did five years in prison and came out with no college debt and a, and a career that has paved my whole way. Now I've gone, you can all have gone from a little gray. <laughs> uh, I think that, um, what was the specific question? Sorry. I got lost. Uh, if you had to give a piece of advice to any oh, new budding yeah, artist out I see so many people, I call it saving yourself into a hole, right? Like if every corner of your being is about saving money, then chances are you're not really investing the time and energy that it takes to make yourself what take yourself where you want to go right so invest in education always invest in the tools for yourself don't worry about that stuff because i mean dude i came out of i have no educational background at all and i'm you know over 200 bucks an hour we're charging people more than three dollars more than a dollar a minute three more than three dollars a minute you know what i mean I mean, like, if you're going to be a, if you're going to try to make money and, and try to generate cash and support a family and stuff, um, it's the best investment you could ever make. It's going to pay back more than anything, you know, and take the time to learn how to do things and do them right. Right. Um, I had an instructor one time and, and his motto was, it's not that practice makes perfect. It's that perfect practice makes perfect, right? You have to practice doing a thing perfectly um, to learn to, to get to that level of mastery. And, you know, I, I tell people all the time, thousand hours of work behind me that I'll never get a dollar for, that'll never get sold. That, that is, you know, whatever, but it's sold a million dollars in tattoos just from people coming in and feeling like the vibe was right. And liking the art, even if they weren't getting it from me, you know, it, it's, it's in that time your ability to at least let people know i don't think i've developed a style of my own but i do think i've developed enough of a of a visual language to let people know that i know what i'm doing and i'm here to walk them through the process that's awesome that's awesome um and what truths have you found that are simple about you know everything that you do but not easy uh, I love this question because I get so many varied answers on it. Um, but, you know, we want to look for truths that are simple, but not easy. You know, it could be about the industry. It could be about, you know, working in 3D. It could be, you know, anything. Well, I think personally, like, you know, it's, it's a weird place to be in. Where this is everybody is dying to be professional and I want to be professional and we all, you know, I'm in the same boat as everybody else. However, we also have to respect the fact that tattoos were here before any border, any law, any current language. Um, and so there's, you're going to do stop. It's the same with the conversations with the AI, with everything else is like, you're not going to get it out, dude. It's going to filter into everything. And if you treat it right, it will always be there for you it picked me up at my darkest place. You know, if you just believe in yourself and you believe in the fact that like you're good in the world and you're trying to give back, um, it'll come back. And sometimes that's really hard to understand or think or feel. Um, and you know, <clears throat> a lot of it's bullshit. So this stuff, you know, I worked for a company for a while and they were selling ink and you don't really realize that like, yeah, this thing looks super dope, but they're doing a brand new, fresh layer of it every time they take a picture, you know, like, or uh, I'm the ink company, it was like a, they wanted to be big powder base. And then I was there when they switched to predispersed, which is what everybody makes and uses. But at the same time, like, you know, not what we were first got there uh, right right you know it's kind of like you have to you can never really take anything at face value you have to look into it and know like 
okay, is this a gimmick? And is this, did this person find out a formula and that formula makes sales? And I'm at the other end of the, is this like something is going to really help and inform me and, in, and in how I work going into the future. And, you know, taking the steps and the time to just go through the process of learning those things that are going to help you get to where you want to be, be a Procreate or Photoshop or Squarespace or, you know, any kind of other program that you could talk, think about or, or tool, um, you know, you're gonna have to take the leap, you're gonna have to spend the money to do the thing. And then once you do, it's going to pay back. And, um, you know, it's made all the difference to just continually, I think that's my safe place now, right, is like, um learning and, and trying new things i tell everybody i turned 21 and when i was locked up and i was in the hole at the time and uh i just swore that i would never celebrate another birthday i would just work on all my birthdays and i would work on all the holidays if i could just do this and um uh you know it's, it's worked out to the better 90 percent of the time that's awesome yeah, that's good advice, man. Real good advice. Well, that kind of wraps up everything that I wanted to talk to you about today, man. Uh, thank you for taking the time to jump yeah, no on problem. here. Uh, always appreciated, man. Um, and in fact, we've got a QR code already set up for you. So if anyone wants to reach out to Mickey, go through, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen. Um, and that should take you right over to his website. Um, Mickey, Can I give you thank a different you. Site also, what? Can I give you a different site also? Just I'll, I'll yeah, just sure thing. So I don't have it linked. I I lowbrownowhow.com. I'm okay. going to offer the Danger Noodle Doodle tool set. Um, okay. For whatever reason, it's not up letting me upload the files right now. But I do have a, a interest registry. So if anybody wants to register there, um, it's going to be worth an extra. 20% off the, the sale price if you sign up before um, before I get the store lined up right. And you get updates for life, right? If you let me email you and I update and put new textures in there, new new body parts for these things, you'll have access to that forever. You'll get an email update. You just download the new files, away you go. Yeah, I've got, uh, let's see. There you go, lowbrownknowhow.com. Perfect. Yeah, feel free, go through, scan it, um, take a look. Uh, you've got some great stuff that you've already have on there. Um, and thank you so much for jumping yeah, in today. So I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been an honor to have you on here, man. Hopefully we get you back I on here again soon. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna go sign up with all the, um, with reinvent with all I just got the reinventing message again. I'm gonna start hitting all of them every time so that I can uh reach out a little bit more to people. I know people are looking right on for information. Well, it's always appreciated, man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you have a great day. Thank you, you too. And uh for anyone out there that wants to reach out to me if you have ideas for people you'd like to have on this show, or if you have questions you'd like to have answered during one of these episodes. Feel free to reach out to me right up here, Instagram at Philly Inc. You can also email me, Jason at reinventingthetattoo.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, uh, and stay tuned for next Monday. Uh, next Monday, uh, we are back with Skill Building Monday for episode number 148. Um, so hopefully, I will see you guys then. Until that point, keep those hands moving, keep everything going. Uh, keep pushing forward and I'll see everyone next Monday. Cheers.